Welcome to I Am Stoic. You might ask, why kindness isn't a virtue? Well, the Stoics put virtue first, but they also teach us how to make good decisions. Seneca, a famous Stoic philosopher, once said that wherever there is a person, there is a chance to be kind. But what happens when our kindness goes in the wrong direction and becomes a veil that blocks our way to virtue? Let's think about it together. Have you ever found yourself showing kindness so much that it took away from your own happiness? Or maybe you used kindness as a shield to avoid facing hard facts. Friends, these times of too much or the wrong kind of kindness are what we want to shine a light on today as we go through these 10 ways. I want you to think about, question and interact with the ideas presented. Are there times in your own life when kindness has not been the guiding light of virtue, but rather a shadow casting doubt on your path? How can we balance our natural desire to be kind with the knowledge to know when it serves us and when it doesn't? Let's look into this complicated dance of kindness and wisdom together. Stoic ideals that have stood the test of time show us how to live with virtue, strength and true kindness in our hearts. Come with me on this journey of understanding. Maybe by doing this, we'll find a greater link to ourselves and the world around us. Stay with us until the end of the journey and don't miss any of the important stops along the way. Each milestone lesson has useful information that will help you live a better life. Number 1. When being nice makes you take on too much. In the search for virtue, kindness is like a lighthouse that points us towards selflessness and care. But like a double-edged sword, if we let this virtue grow out of hand, it leads us to the situation where kindness makes you take on too much. Let's think of a real-life example. A ship's captain, whose ship is full of goods meant for faraway shores, keeps loading it up because he has a giving spirit. Overloaded with supplies because he wanted to help as many people as possible, but the extra weight makes the ship less stable, which puts at risk the mission he set out to complete. In the same way, when we do too many good things without thinking about our limits, we risk our lives tipping over from the weight of our good intentions. Now think about your own life. Have you ever felt the strain of being generous, uh, the tiredness that comes from giving without stopping? Try your best to be nice. Stoicism teaches us not to avoid kindness, but to accept it with care, knowing that genuine kindness includes being kind to oneself. Now let's talk about your own experiences. Have you ever been drained not by a lack of goodwill, but by too much of it? Have you ever become so caught up in other people's needs that your own well-being began to suffer? When we break down in this stoic thought, we are reminded that true kindness isn't just giving. It's also about knowing our limits and being aware that in order to truly help others, we must also take care of ourselves. So let's make sure that our generosity doesn't leave us empty. Kindness should be practiced in a way that uplifts our spirits without tying them down with obligations that are out of our reach. This balanced approach is where we find the true essence of kindness. It helps both the giver and the receiver, creating a world where everyone respects and lives in harmony. Number two, when being kind, lets other people take advantage of you. Kindness shines like a bright thread through the complex web of human interactions, connecting people with compassion and understanding. But there is a deep, somber question we must ask ourselves. What happens when kindness turns into the very way others take advantage of us? Consider a story from the writings of the great philosopher Seneca that shows how dangerous it can be to be too kind. In the busy city of Rome, a stoic philosopher sees a man who is too kind and gives his cloak to someone in need. As word of his unbridled kindness spreads, more and more people, more people come to him with requests until he is left shivering without even his tunic. Seneca warns that no one who cares about their own well-being should offer themselves to the mercy of others without limits. That being said, this story is not an attack on generous. It's a call for balance. It teaches us that if we aren't careful, kindness can turn into a way to be taken advantage of, leaving us feeling empty and sad. How often do we go above and beyond in order to be seen as kind, only to feel undervalued and ignored? More importantly, how do we draw the line between kindness and selflessness? Stoicism does not tell us to harden our hearts, but to strengthen them with knowledge. This way, our acts of kindness are both a choice and a representation of our inner strength. By taking a stoic approach, we learn to offer our kindness not as an endless well, 
but as a valuable resource bestowed with intention and foresight. It is in this balance that we find true verticindness that uplifts without being mixed up. We extend our kindness not as naive, but as a conscious choice, backed by the strength of our character and the clarity of our judgment. In this way, we live up to the Stoic ideal by being kind in a way that is as strong as it is sincere, making sure that our goodwill becomes a beacon of virtue instead of a weakness that can be used for evil. People often think of kindness as a trait that makes both the giver and the receiver better. Too much kindness, on the other hand, can sometimes lead to being taken advantage of in a world where not everyone is good. To make sure that your kindness is not taken advantage of, you need to know how to mix being kind with keeping your self-respect. Through the view of Stoicism, we will talk about how to find this careful balance and make sure that your kindness is a strength, not a weakness. Know the signs of exploitation. It's important to know how to tell if someone is taking advantage of your kindness. This includes people who only contact you when they need something, who break your rules over and over, or who make you feel bad when you say no. If you are aware of these habits, you can deal with the problem before it gets worse. Make your limits clear. A big part of stoic thought is setting and sticking to clear limits. Setting limits isn't a mean thing to do, it's just being aware of your own wants and boundaries. Make it clear to others what your limits are and stick to them. This keeps people from thinking that you are weak because you are kind. Develop respect for yourself. Stoicism says that respecting yourself is a necessary part of having a good life. Self-respect means knowing how valuable you are and not letting other people take that away from you. Keeping your self-respect shows that you are kind because you are strong, not because you want to be liked. Learn how to communicate assertively. Being nice doesn't mean you have to do nothing. You can say what you want and need in a clear and polite way when you use assertive communication. To do this, you have to stand up for yourself without being mean. Being forceful will help make sure that your kindness is returned in kind and not used against you. Think and change. Self-reflection is an important part of being a Stoic. Think about the people you've helped and see if they seem to be taking advantage of your kindness. Change how you do things if you find that it is. This could mean being more picky about who you show kindness to, or coming up with new ways to help others without putting your own health at risk. You can make sure that your kindness stays a good thing by following these stoic ideals every day. You can build better, more respectful relationships with others if you find a balance between being kind, self-respecting and bold. Number three, when being kind makes you give too much. If we want to be kind, which is a virtue praised by both societies and philosophies, we should be careful. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher whose ideas have been around for thousands of years, told a story about a man who gave away everything he owned. His doors were never shut, his table was always set for guests, and his hands were always open and emptying. But as the seasons changed, he found himself alone and poor, not because his kindness wasn't appreciated, but because it had become expected, a right rather than a gift. Epictetus said, in your efforts to be kind, don't make yourself helpless. True kindness is not just giving, but giving wisely. This story isn't just about the dangers of being kind. It also relates to a greater stoic lesson about how important it is to have balance and wisdom in our values. When kindness turns into selflessness, it not only puts our health at risk, it can also weaken the very virtue we were trying to show. The Stoics teach us that virtue should not ruin us, but rather make us thrive. They remind us that too much giving can sometimes weaken the foundations on which our ability to give is built. Stoics were ancient Greek philosophers who taught us about the golden mean and how to find balance in all parts of life. They thought that even the most noble virtues like kindness could lead us astray if we had too much of it. To help you understand this, think of a lighthouse and how its beam guides ships through the night. Your kindness is like that beam. It guides, comforts and gives to those around you. But what happens when it shines so brightly and non-stop that it blinds you to your own needs? Worse goes out on its own Marcus Aurelius, a stoic emperor whose writings on life continue to inspire, once said, love only what happens. It was meant to be greater harmony. In this gentle reminder that to live without limits is to invite discord into one's soul, because by giving too much we risk depleting our reserves. 
and not being able to serve love or life with the vibrancy we cherish. Let us carry on the stoic legacy of balanced virtue weaving into our lives, a kindness that is as smart as it is deep. Let us give until we are full, but in a way that benefits both the giver and the receiver, embodying the true essence of stoic wisdom. If you agree with us and like the stoic concept, please leave a note below to show that you do. Number 4. Sometimes being kind makes you forget about yourself. Have you ever thought that your kindness, which is a highly valued and sought-after virtue, might be the very thing that makes you neglect your health? This question, which may seem counterintuitive at first, can lead to a deep, somber reflection on self-care and the balance that our virtues need. With their deep knowledge of human nature, the Stoics knew that true kindness must come from self-awareness and balance. After all, how can someone truly feed someone else when they are hungry themselves? Through the ages once said, it's not what happens to you that matters, but how you react to it. This simple but deep statement holds the key to understanding what we're talking about now. Kindness in its purest form shouldn't make us weaker instead, it should make us stronger and more abundant, so that we can be generous from a place of strength and plenty. Let's work on cultivating kindness, a trait praised by both societies and beliefs. Giving too much can lead to neglecting our own needs, dreams and well-being. This is not the Stoic way. Stoicism teaches us that putting others before ourselves is an imbalance and a departure from the natural order where taking care of oneself and others go hand in hand. Picture a lamp that lights up the room, but slowly goes out as it does so, leaving nothing behind. This is what Stoicism warns about the possible cost of kindness without wisdom. The candle must first keep its flame alive. To keep shining our kindness on the world, we must also take care of our own health and happiness. Let us embrace the stoic virtue of moderation, remembering that taking care of oneself is not selfish but necessary. It's the basis for real, long-lasting kindness. In this way we embody the true essence of stoicism, where kindness and self-care coexist in harmony, leading us to a life of fulfillment, balance and deep compassion. Number 5. When kindness makes you always try to please everyone. Let's look at this stoic way of thinking by telling a story. One day, a stoic philosopher famous in Athens for his deep peace and wisdom was watching the busy life around him. He saw a man who, in his kindness, tried to be everything to everyone. Every day, the man would bend and sway like a reed in the wind, trying to satisfy everyone's whims. The philosopher approached the man and told him a story. If you keep trying to please everyone, you'll end up like a ship lost at sea, tossed around by every gust of wind, instead of like a lighthouse. Real kindness, the stoic kind, isn't about giving up your own needs to help others. It's about being a strong, honest example that doesn't change course every time someone asks you to, but stays true to your values and principles. As simple as this story may seem, it captures a central idea in stoic thought. Real kindness starts with developing a strong sense of self-respect and inner harmony. It's not about giving in to other people's wants, but about following our own moral code. We can break free from the chains of people-pleasing and live a life of authenticity and integrity if we follow reason and virtue and seek approval from within. Let this stoic wisdom light our path of kindness when it leads us to give up our values and well-being in the endless pursuit of others. Instead of trying to get everyone's praise, let's try to be the lighthouse that shines brightly and steadily. Our light won't be seen by everyone, but it will help us find our way through the storm. We are halfway through today's lesson. Your participation is a great source of support for our mission to teach more people about the true values of Stoicism. Please like and share this video to teach your family and friends these lessons or leave a comment. Thank you for reading this. If you are ready for the next five lessons, I value your life. Kindness is often seen as a good thing to do and a way to get along with others and make the world a better place. But when being kind turns into having to please everyone, it can make you lose your own ethics and self-respect. This lesson talks about the idea of being too kind, what it means, and how to find a balance between being kind and being yourself. Getting to know excessive kindness, putting the wants of others ahead of your own all the time, even if it hurts your own health, is an example of being too kind. 
because they want everyone to like and accept them, they do things that aren't good for them to please other people. Effects that are bad for personal health. It's possible to feel stressed, burned out and angry when you try to please everyone. People who do this often forget about their own wants and goals, which can lead to a loss of self-respect and happiness. Setting up healthy limits. To stay away from the problems that come with being too kind, it's important to set clear limits. This means knowing your limits and telling other people about them in a clear way. Setting limits helps you be kind while also taking care of your own needs. How and why to be assertive. Being outspoken means being honest about your feelings, wants and thoughts without putting other people down. This is a very important skill to keep from being too kind. Being assertive lets you be kind without putting your own ideals and health at risk. Choosing to be kind to yourself. When you practice self-compassion, you are kind and understanding to yourself, just like you are to other people. It helps you see how valuable you are and make sure that your acts of kindness don't hurt your health and happiness. Being kind is a good thing, but it shouldn't make you give up your own needs and try to please other people. You can stay in a healthy mix by learning about the effects of being too kind and using techniques like setting limits, being firm and being kind to yourself. This way of doing things will make sure that your kindness is real and lasts, which is good for you and the people around you. Number 6. When being kind makes things worse in life. Being too nice is not helpful in the same way that too much honey is not. Epictetus, a sage from the heart of Stoicism, told us to think about the balance in everything, even in kindness. Now let's look at how too much kindness can be our Achilles heel. When we show kindness without thinking, without the Stoic virtue of wisdom, we set ourselves up for disappointment, the uninvited guest, Imagine extending your hand over and over again, only to have it ignored. The Stoics remind us that our actions and kindness must be based on reason, not just the emotional satisfaction of being needed or liked. Think about this. When we do something nice with the hope of getting something in return, are we really being kind, or are we just, ah, uh, trading, trading our actions for future returns? Marcus Aurelius, another pillar of Stoicism, would argue that true kindness asks for nothing in return. It is an act aligned with our nature, not a seed planted for harvest. When our kindness is genuine, we do not tether our well-being to the responses of others, thereby shielding ourselves from the sting of disappointment in the grand theatre of life. Stoicism teaches us to play our part with virtue and integrity, to extend kindness not as a gambler throws his coins, but as the sun casts its rise freely and without expectation. Let us be kind, but let us also be wise. Let us not allow our kindness to lead us into a quagmire of disappointment. Instead, let us offer our goodness with open eyes, knowing that the true measure of our actions lies not in the gratitude we receive, but in the virtue of the act itself. So my friends, as we navigate the waters of kindness, let us steer our ship with the compass of stoic wisdom, ensuring that our kindness is a beacon of, of our virtue, not a harbinger of our downfall. People often think of kindness as a virtue, something that makes our exchanges better and helps us build good relationships. But being kind can sometimes have bad effects that you didn't mean for it to. The lesson talks about the different kinds of kindness and shows how being too kind can make things worse in real life. Letting unhealthy behavior happen. Meaning, being kind can sometimes mean letting someone do something hurtful or dangerous. For example, giving money to a friend who has bad money habits over and over again might stop them from learning how to handle their money properly. If a parent always finds a reason for their child's bad behavior, that child won't learn what will happen if they keep doing what they're doing. This could cause problems in the future. Being used for your own gain. Being too kind can make you easy for people to take advantage of. Some people may see your kindness as a weakness and use it against you by expecting favors without giving anything back. Someone at work who always asks you to cover their shifts because they know you won't say no, which makes you more stressed out and adds to your job. Getting tired and angry. Putting the wants of others ahead of your own all the time can make you tired and angry. Being kind all the time can make you forget about your own health, which can leave you physically and emotionally worn out. 
For example, always taking on extra work at work can make you feel stressed and unappreciated, which can make you dislike your co-workers or your job. Not having any limits being too nice usually means you don't have good personal limits. People may enter your personal space if you don't set clear boundaries. This can make you feel like you have no control over your life. Allowing friends or family to make big claims on your time and energy without thinking about your own needs can make you feel suffocated and ignored. Lack of balance in relationships. Relationships work best when both people accept and balance each other. When one person is always giving and the other is always getting, the relationship can become unhealthy and tense. In a love partnership, if one person always gives up something and the other always gets something in return, it can make both people feel cheated and unhappy. Being kind is a good thing, but it's important to know when it's hurting someone more than helping them. You can be kind in a way that helps you and those around you by setting healthy limits, making sure that relationships work both ways, and putting your own health first. Don't forget that it's okay to say no and put yourself first. Number 7. When kindness makes you think you can change others. Has anyone ever been so kind that they thought their warmth and giving could change someone else's soul? In the grand fabric of life, each of us is just a lively and unique thread. Stoic philosophy tells us to live in balance with nature. To do this, we must know that each person and each thread in this complex web is separate and independent. You have control over your mind, not outside events. Understand this and you will find strength. Marcus Aurelius, a great example of Stoic thought, once said these words. Spread the deep truth that our kindness shouldn't be used to shape other people's will or character, but should be a genuine expression of who we are. When we show kindness to others with the hidden hope or expectation of sparking change, we tie our tranquility to their whims and will. This, my friends, is a recipe for disappointment and disillusionment. Stoicism teaches us that real peace comes from knowing and accepting what we can control and what we can't do anything about. Therefore, let us be kind to others without expecting anything in return. Let our kindness be like a river that flows smoothly through lives without trying to change its course. Remember that it is not our job to change others. Our job is to live a good life, set a good example, and create an inner garden where peace blooms regardless of what other people do or don't do. In this dance of life, let us not be puppeteers, but dancers moving gracefully and extending our hands in kindness, not to control others, but to share in the joy of existence. In the grand scheme of things, it is not our kindness that will change others. It may be our example that will inspire change as naturally and beautifully as dawn brings a new day. What do you think about this lesson? Please share your thoughts in the comments. From a stoic point of view, being kind and believing that our deeds can make other people better are often linked ideas. This idea, on the other hand, can cause anger and regret. Stoicism tells us that being kind is a good thing, but it's also important to know how much power we have over other people. The ability to change comes within each person, and trying to force others to change cannot always work. We will look at the stoic view of kindness and how important it is to know how much power we have over other people in this lesson. What kindness means in stoicism. Being kind is an important stoic virtue that comes from having kindness and understanding. It shows how human we are and how we are all linked. But Stoicism stresses that being kind should be done without any hopes or hidden goals, getting to know your own limits. Stoics say that we should focus on what we can change. The things other people do and how they act are not within our control. We should be kind and helpful, but we also need to know that we can't make anyone change. The false sense of control. People often think they can change other people by being kind because they want to feel in control. This way of thinking can make us angry and upset when our efforts don't lead to the results we want. Stoicism teaches us to let go of this false belief and accept other people as they are, using compassion without attachment. Being compassionate without getting personally involved in the result is known as detached compassion. No matter how other people react to our kindness, we can keep our inner peace and strength by practicing detached compassion, focusing on getting better. Stoicism tells us to put our energy into getting better and growing as people.
focusing on what we can control, which is a stoic concept, lets us be kind without expecting anything in return. This leads to a more peaceful and happy life. Number 8. When being kind makes you worry about other people's opinions. How come we sometimes think that being kind to others is the key to making them change? Let's look at this idea through the lens of Stoicism and see what problems this view can cause. Think of each person as a castle whose walls are made up of experiences and beliefs that have been built up over a lifetime. Now think of your kindness as a gentle breeze, not a blasting ram. It can touch the walls and maybe even caress the banners on top. But can it change the shape of the fortress? The fortress's self-stoic advice tells us that change, especially in other people, is like the path of the stars. It's out of our hands. Seneca, a sage from our stoic lineage, once said, We are waves of the same sea, leaves of the same tree, flowers of the same garden. This beautiful imagery reminds us that even though we are all connected, each wave, leaf and flower has its own essence and path. Your kindness, while noble and pure, is like a breeze in the garden. It can move the leaves but not control their growth. When we show kindness with the hope that it will change others, we set ourselves up for disappointment and maybe even a loss of spirit. True kindness is given without expecting anything in return or wanting the other person to change. It is the embodiment of our highest selves and is freely given like the sun shining on both good and bad. So let's not tie our happiness to the changing tides of other people. Wills let us instead find joy in the act of kindness itself, in the sincerity of our intentions and in the happiness that comes from acting in line with our nature and virtue. Let our kindness be a gift, not a plan, a reflection of who we are, not a way to change things like an oak tree that doesn't bend with the wind, but stands tall providing shade and shelter. Let us be a shining example of virtue, kindness and strength. Inspiring change not by force, but by the quiet power of our unwavering presence. Number 9. When being kind makes you ignore what other people say. In the grand theatre of life we all have many parts, and in each one we see things from a different point of view. It's like we're all artists working on the same picture, but using different colours and brush strokes. Stoicism tells us that recognising and respecting these differences is not only okay, but also necessary. Just because two people agree doesn't mean they are good. Marcus Aurelius told us that harmony in thinking is not the highest level of moral power. He meant that when we use kindness as a veil to hide our true feelings or to avoid conflict, kindness, we're not building real relationships. We're just putting up fronts. Imagine walking through a garden full of statues, each one representing a relationship in your life. Would you rather these statues be just representations of relationships, lacking the essence that gives them meaning? Or would you rather they are real people who can interact with each other, even if they disagree sometimes? Stoicism doesn't support conflict. Instead, it encourages us to be honest and strong enough to stand by our beliefs and voice our opinions with courage and compassion. It's in disagreements that we test and strengthen our relationships by seeing them not as sources of conflict, but as chances to learn and grow. To honor the stoic virtue of courage, let us not be afraid to say what we really think while pretending to be kind. Let kindness not shut you up or stop you from seeing the value in different points of view. Instead, let it be the light that guides you through the tough conversations that push you to grow as a person and strengthen your relationships with others. People often think of kindness as a trait, a sign of good character, and a way to make interactions better. But sometimes being kind can make us forget about important differences which could let problems get worse or allow bad behavior to happen. In the setting of Stoicism, it is very important to know when and how to state your opinion without losing your kindness. This lesson looks at the balance between being kind and being firm, which helps us handle arguments with grace and understanding. What kindness is and how far it can go. Being kind is important for building good relationships and getting along with others. That being said, it has limits. Foregoing arguments out of kindness can cause problems that aren't fixed and personal anger. Knowing the limits of kindness is important for keeping your own ethics and keeping relationships healthy. Why being assertive is important. Being assertive means being able to say what you think and need in a clear and polite way. It's not about being mean or argumentative. 
It's about standing up for yourself while still considering other people's points of view. Being outspoken makes sure that differences are dealt with in a healthy way instead of being ignored. Being kind and honest at the same time. Being kind doesn't mean avoiding tough talks. It means treating them with kindness and care. Being honest about why you don't agree with someone while still being kind helps build trust and understanding. Making sure that everyone feels heard and valued is an important part of open communication. Getting the stoic point of view stoicism tells us to accept what we can't change and focus on the things we can. This means being aware of our own feelings and reactions when we disagree. Being calm and logical when we disagree with someone is the best way to handle arguments without having them turn nasty or angry. Tips on how to effectively handle disagreements. Say I sentences to talk about how you feel without pointing the finger at other people. Active listening can help you see things from the other person's point of view. Find shared ground and ways to solve the problem that work for everyone. Make sure there are clear limits so that being kind doesn't lead to neglecting yourself. Think about conflicts to learn and grow from them and make future encounters better. We can handle differences in a fair and effective way by combining kindness with assertiveness and stoic principles. This will help us build better and more genuine relationships. Number 10. When kindness masks real connections. Why do we put on the kindness mask, sometimes to hide the real ties that give life its greatest meaning? Let's look at this problem with the sharp eyes of stoicism, having the courage to see the truth behind the mask in the web of human relationships. Real relationships are what make patterns last the longest. In the same way, when we hide our true selves under the cover of perpetual kindness, we keep other people from getting to know and love us for who we really are. Stoics say that being real, present and truly caring is more important than always putting on a happy face. This is true even when it means showing our flaws and facing our truths. Real connections are made in the crucible of authenticity. Connections that stand the test of time and circumstance. So let's take off our masks and let our kindness be a way to connect with real people. We need to be brave and honest, and our relationship should show us as we really are. Because it's in the truth that we find the deepest beauty and power. We're now on a journey to learn more about ourselves. With 10 ways that being kind will ruin your life. It's a powerful warning that kindness should lift people up, not weigh them down that kindness can lead us astray in surprising ways. Let us use the wisdom and discernment that Stoicism teaches us to make our acts of kindness more powerful. Certainly, I'll continue the discussion on kindness from a Stoic perspective, adding approximately 1,000 words to each prompt and maintaining an engaging tone for the audience. I'll pick up where the document left off and continue the exploration of how kindness can sometimes lead us astray. As we delve deeper into the Stoic perspective on kindness, we find ourselves navigating a complex landscape of virtue, intention and consequence. The Stoics, with their keen insight into human nature, recognize that even the noblest of virtues could become a double-edged sword if wielded without wisdom. Kindness, the most cherished of human qualities, is no exception to this rule. Imagine, if you will, a garden. In this garden, kindness is the water that nourishes the plants, helping them grow and flourish. But what happens when we water too much, when our kindness becomes a flood rather than a gentle rain? The very thing that was meant to give life can end up drowning the roots, suffocating the very growth it was meant to encourage. This is the paradox that the Stoics urge us to consider. They ask us to look beyond the surface-level understanding of kindness as an unequivocal good and to examine its deeper implications and potential pitfalls. It's not that kindness itself is flawed, but rather that our application of it can sometimes be misguided or excessive. Consider the parent who, in their kindness, shields their child from every hardship. Their intention is pure to protect and nurture, 
but in doing so they may inadvertently rob the child of the opportunity to develop resilience, to learn from failures, to grow through adversity. The Stoics would argue that true kindness in this situation might involve allowing the child to face challenges, to stumble and get back up, all while providing a supportive presence. Or think about the friend who, in their desire to be kind, always agrees with their companions, never voicing a dissenting opinion or offering constructive criticism. While this might seem kind on the surface, it can lead to shallow relationships built on a foundation of insincerity. The Stoics valued honesty and integrity highly, and would likely argue that true kindness involves being truthful, even when it's uncomfortable. But how do we navigate this tricky terrain? How do we ensure that our kindness remains a virtue rather than becoming a vice? The Stoics offer us some guidance here, emphasizing the importance of wisdom and moderation in all things, including our virtues. First and foremost, they would urge us to examine our motivations. Are we being kind out of a genuine desire to help others and contribute to the greater good? Or are we using kindness as a mask to hide our own insecurities, to avoid conflict or to gain approval? True kindness, from a Stoic perspective, should be an expression of our highest selves, not a tool for manipulation or self-aggrandizement. Secondly, the Stoics would encourage us to consider the long-term consequences of our actions. While an act of kindness might bring immediate relief or happiness, we need to ask ourselves whether it's truly beneficial in the grand scheme of things. Sometimes what seems kind in the moment can lead to dependency, enabling of harmful behaviors or other negative outcomes down the line. This doesn't mean we should become cold or withholding. Far from it. The Stoics valued kindness and compassion highly, but they also prized wisdom and clear-sightedness. They would argue that true kindness involves seeing the bigger picture, understanding the complexities of human nature and social dynamics, and acting in a way that truly serves the highest good. So how can we practice this more discerning form of kindness? It starts with self-reflection. Before we act, we might ask ourselves, is this act of kindness truly serving the other person's growth and well-being? Am I respecting their autonomy and dignity? Am I creating dependency or fostering independence? Am I being truthful and authentic in my kindness, or am I using it as a shield? It also involves developing the courage to sometimes be perceived as unkind in the short term for the sake of long-term benefit. This might mean having difficult conversations, setting boundaries, or allowing others to face the natural consequences of their actions. The Stoics would argue that this too is a form of kindness, perhaps the highest form. As we navigate this path, we might find that our kindness becomes more intentional, more thoughtful, and ultimately more impactful. We might discover that by tempering our kindness with wisdom, we're able to truly serve others in a deeper, more meaningful way. This journey of exploring the nuances of kindness is not an easy one. It requires constant vigilance, self-reflection, and a willingness to grapple with complex ethical questions. But the Stoics would argue that this is precisely the point. It's through this process of questioning, reflecting, and refining our understanding that we grow in wisdom and virtue. So as we move forward, let's challenge ourselves to think more deeply about our acts of kindness. Let's strive to be kind in a way that truly uplifts and empowers others, rather than creating dependency or avoiding difficult truths. Let's aim for a kindness that is grounded in wisdom, authenticity, and a genuine concern for the long-term well-being of others. In doing so, we honor the Stoic tradition of seeking virtue through reason and self-reflection. We recognize that true kindness, like all virtues, is not a simple matter of following rules, but a complex dance of intention, action, and consequence. And perhaps most importantly, we open ourselves up to a deeper, more meaningful way of connecting with others and contributing to the world around us. As we continue on this path, we might find that our kindness becomes not just a series of actions, but a way of being in the world. A way of approaching life with open eyes and an open heart, always striving to act in accordance with our highest values and the greater good. This, the Stoics might argue, is the true power of kindness, not as a mask or a tool, but as a genuine expression of our deepest humanity. Copyrightry Continue Editors, we delve deeper into the Stoic perspective on kindness. We find ourselves confronting yet another paradox. 
the tension between being kind and being true to ourselves. This is a dilemma that many of us face in our daily lives, often without even realizing it. We may find ourselves agreeing to things we don't really want to do, or suppressing our own needs and desires in the name of being nice. But is this truly kindness, or is it a form of self-betrayal? The Stoics, with their emphasis on personal integrity and living in accordance with nature, would likely argue that true kindness cannot come at the expense of our authentic selves. They would encourage us to examine our actions closely and ask ourselves, are we being kind out of a genuine desire to help others, or are we simply trying to avoid conflict or gain approval? Consider for a moment the last time you agreed to do something you didn't really want to do. Perhaps it was taking on extra work at the office or attending a social event when you desperately needed some alone time. You might have told yourself that you were being kind, that you were helping out or being a good friend. But were you really serving anyone by denying your own needs and boundaries? The Stoics would argue that this kind of self-sacrifice is not true kindness at all. Instead, it's a form of inauthenticity that can lead to resentment, burnout and damaged relationships in the long run. True kindness, they might say, involves being honest about our limitations and respecting our own needs as much as we respect those of others. This doesn't mean we should never make sacrifices for others or put their needs before our own. Far from it. The Stoics valued service and duty highly, but they also emphasized the importance of living in accordance with our nature and our values. They would likely argue that true kindness involves finding a balance between caring for others and caring for ourselves. So how do we strike this balance? How do we practice kindness in a way that honors both our own needs and those of others? The Stoics offer us some guidance here through their teachings on virtue, wisdom and self-knowledge. First and foremost, they would encourage us to cultivate self-awareness. This means taking the time to really understand our own needs, boundaries and values. It means learning to recognize when we're acting out of genuine kindness and when we're simply trying to please others or avoid conflict. This kind of self-knowledge is not easy to attain. It requires constant introspection and a willingness to confront uncomfortable truths about ourselves but it's essential if we want to practice authentic kindness. Secondly, the Stoics would urge us to develop the courage to be honest both with ourselves and with others. This might mean learning to say no when we need to, or expressing our true feelings even when it's uncomfortable. It might mean having difficult conversations or setting boundaries that others might not like. But the Stoics would argue that this kind of honesty is ultimately kinder than pretending to be someone we're not or agreeing to things that go against our values. Consider, for example, the friend who always agrees to help others move, even when they're exhausted and overcommitted. On the surface, this might seem kind. But what if this friend's constant self-sacrifice leads to burnout, causing them to withdraw from their relationships altogether? Wouldn't it be kinder in the long run for this person to be honest about their limitations and sometimes say no? The Stoics would likely argue that true kindness involves being reliable and consistent in our actions. When we constantly override our own needs and boundaries, we become unreliable not just to ourselves, but to others as well. We may find ourselves cancelling plans at the last minute because we've overcommitted or showing up to events feeling resentful and irritable. This kind of inconsistency can damage our relationships far more than honest communication about our limitations. Moreover, the Stoics would remind us that we cannot pour from an empty cup. When we constantly prioritize others' needs over our own, we deplete our own resources both physical and emotional. We may find ourselves with less energy, less patience and less genuine kindness to offer. By taking care of ourselves and respecting our own boundaries, we ensure that we have the resources to be truly kind when it matters most. This doesn't mean we should become selfish or ignore the needs of others. The Stoics valued compassion and service highly, but they also recognized that true virtue comes from a place of balance and wisdom. They would encourage us to find ways to be kind that don't require us to compromise our integrity or neglect our own well-being. So how might this look in practice? It might mean learning to communicate our boundaries clearly and compassionately. Instead of simply saying yes to every request, we might learn to say, I'd love to help, but I don't have the capacity right now. 
Is there another way I could support you? It might mean being honest about our feelings, even when it's uncomfortable. Instead of pretending to agree with someone to avoid conflict, we might learn to express our disagreement respectfully and constructively. It might also mean redefining what kindness looks like in our relationships. Perhaps true kindness isn't always about making others happy in the moment, but about fostering relationships built on honesty, mutual respect and genuine connection. Maybe it's about creating spaces where people feel safe to be their authentic selves, rather than always trying to please or accommodate others. As we navigate this path, we may find that our relationships become deeper and more meaningful. When we're honest about our needs and boundaries, we create opportunities for genuine connection and mutual understanding. We allow others to know us as we truly are, rather than the version of ourselves we think they want to see. Moreover, by modeling this kind of authentic kindness, we give others permission to do the same. We create a culture of honesty and self-respect, where people feel empowered to express their true selves and set healthy boundaries. This, the Stoics might argue, is a far greater kindness than always saying yes or trying to please everyone. Of course, this path is not always easy. It requires courage, self-awareness, and a willingness to face potential conflict or disapproval. But the Stoics would remind us that virtue is not about taking the easy path, it's about doing what's right, even when it's difficult. As we continue to explore the nuances of kindness through a Stoic lens, we're challenged to think more deeply about what it truly means to be kind. We're invited to consider kindness not just as a series of actions, but as a way of being in the world, a way that honors both our own authenticity and the well-being of others. This kind of kindness, grounded in wisdom and self-knowledge, has the power to transform not just our relationships, but our entire approach to life. As we journey further into the stoic exploration of kindness, we encounter another profound question. How do we balance kindness with justice? This is a dilemma that has puzzled philosophers and ethicists for centuries, and it's one that the stoics grappled with in their own time. Imagine for a moment that you're faced with a situation where being kind to one person might mean being unjust to another. Perhaps a friend has confided in you about a wrongdoing, and you're torn between the kindness of keeping their secret and the justice of revealing the truth. Or maybe you're in a position of authority, and you must decide between showing leniency to an individual and upholding the rules that ensure fairness for all. These are the kinds of complex ethical dilemmas that the Stoics would urge us to consider carefully. They recognize that virtues like kindness and justice, while both inherently good, can sometimes come into conflict with one another. In such cases, they would argue that we need to use our reason and wisdom to navigate the situation, always striving to act in accordance with the highest good. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus once said, it is impossible to begin to learn that which one thinks one already knows. This wisdom is particularly relevant when we're dealing with the intersection of kindness and justice. Many of us have internalized the idea that kindness always means being gentle, agreeable and avoiding conflict. But the Stoics would challenge us to expand our understanding of what true kindness entails. From a Stoic perspective, true kindness isn't always about making others feel good in the moment. Sometimes it involves making difficult decisions or having uncomfortable conversations for the sake of a greater good. It might mean being firm when necessary or holding others accountable for their actions. This kind of kindness requires courage, discernment and a strong moral compass. Consider, for example, a parent who catches their child lying. The kind thing to do in the moment might seem to be to let it slide to avoid upsetting the child. But the Stoics would likely argue that true kindness in this situation involves addressing the lie, helping the child understand why honesty is important, and perhaps even implementing appropriate consequences. This might be uncomfortable in the short term, but it serves the child's long-term development and character. Or think about a manager who needs to give feedback to an underperforming employee. It might seem kinder to avoid the conversation to spare the employee's feelings, but is it truly kind to allow someone to continue struggling without the information they need to improve? The Stoics would likely argue that the truly kind action here is to have the difficult conversation to provide honest feedback and support for growth. This doesn't mean that kindness and justice are always at odds. 
In fact, the Stoics would argue that at their highest levels, these virtues are in harmony with one another. True kindness, they might say, is inherently just because it seeks the highest good for all involved. And true justice is inherently kind because it creates a world in which everyone can thrive. But reaching this level of virtue requires deep wisdom and careful discernment. It requires us to look beyond surface-level kindness and consider the broader implications of our actions. The Stoics would encourage us to ask ourselves, are we being truly kind or are we simply avoiding discomfort? Are we serving justice or are we hiding behind rules to avoid making difficult decisions? This kind of ethical reasoning isn't easy. It requires us to grapple with complex situations where there may not be a clear right answer. But the Stoics would argue that this is precisely the point. It's through wrestling with these difficult questions that we grow in wisdom and virtue. So how can we cultivate this kind of discerning kindness in our own lives? The Stoics offer us several strategies. First, they would encourage us to develop our capacity for rational thought. This means learning to step back from our immediate emotional reactions and consider situations from multiple angles. It means being willing to question our assumptions and challenge our own thinking. Secondly, they would urge us to cultivate a sense of duty and responsibility to the greater good. The Stoics believe that we all have roles to play in society and that fulfilling these roles with integrity is a key part of living virtuously. This sense of duty can help guide us when we're faced with difficult decisions between kindness and justice. Thirdly, they would emphasize the importance of self-reflection and continuous learning. The Stoics practiced daily self-examination, reviewing their actions and decisions to see where they could improve. This kind of ongoing self-reflection can help us refine our understanding of kindness and justice over time. As we navigate this path, we may find that our concept of kindness evolves. We might come to see that sometimes the kindest action is the one that challenges us or others to grow. We might recognize that true kindness often requires courage the courage to have difficult conversations, to make unpopular decisions, to stand up for what's right even when it's uncomfortable. This doesn't mean we should become harsh or unfeeling. The Stoics valued compassion highly, and they would likely argue that true justice must be tempered with empathy and understanding. But they would also remind us that sometimes the most compassionate action is the one that pushes us out of our comfort zones and challenges us to become better versions of ourselves. As we continue to explore the nuances of kindness through a Stoic lens, we're invited to think more deeply about what it truly means to be kind. We're challenged to consider kindness not just as a series of pleasant actions, but as a complex virtue that interacts with other virtues like justice, courage and wisdom. This journey of exploring kindness is not an easy one. It requires constant reflection, a willingness to grapple with difficult questions, and the courage to act on our principles even when it's uncomfortable. But the Stoics would argue that this is precisely what makes it worthwhile. It's through this process of questioning, reflecting and striving to act virtuously that we grow as individuals and contribute to the betterment of society as a whole. So as we move forward, let's challenge ourselves to think more deeply about our acts of kindness. Let's strive to be kind in a way that truly serves the highest good, even when that means making difficult decisions or having uncomfortable conversations. Let's aim for a kindness that is grounded in wisdom, justice, and a genuine concern for the long-term well-being of all. As we delve deeper into the Stoic perspective on kindness, we find ourselves confronting yet another challenging aspect, the relationship between kindness and personal growth. The Stoics, with their emphasis on virtue and self-improvement, would likely argue that true kindness should not only benefit others, but also contribute to our own development as individuals. This idea might seem counterintuitive at first. After all, isn't kindness supposed to be selfless? Shouldn't we focus on helping others rather than thinking about how our actions benefit us? But the Stoics would challenge this notion, suggesting that the highest form of kindness is one that elevates both the giver and the recipient. Consider for a moment the often quoted airline safety instruction. In case of an emergency, put on your own oxygen mask before assisting others. This practical advice carries a profound philosophical truth that aligns well with Stoic thinking. 
By taking care of ourselves first, we become better equipped to help others. The Stoics would likely extend this principle to personal growth and virtue. Imagine a person who constantly performs acts of kindness, but never takes the time to reflect on their actions or learn from their experiences. They might be doing good in the world, but are they truly growing as an individual? Are they becoming wiser, more discerning, more virtuous? The Stoics would argue that this kind of unreflective kindness, while not without value, falls short of the highest ideals of virtue. So how can we practice kindness in a way that also fosters our own growth? The Stoics offer us several insights. First, they would encourage us to approach each act of kindness as an opportunity for learning and self-improvement. This might mean reflecting on our motivations. Are we being kind out of a genuine desire to help, or are we seeking praise or recognition? It might mean considering the outcomes of our actions. Did our kindness have the intended effect? Could we have approached the situation differently? Marcus Aurelius in his meditations often wrote about the importance of self-reflection. He might have encouraged us to ask ourselves, what have I learned from this act of kindness? How has it challenged me or helped me grow? By approaching kindness with this mindset of continuous learning, we transform each interaction into a stepping stone for personal development. Secondly, the Stoics would likely argue that true kindness often requires us to step out of our comfort zones. It's easy to be kind in ways that are comfortable and familiar to us. But what about showing kindness in situations that challenge us, that push us to confront our fears or biases? For instance, it might be relatively easy for an extrovert to show kindness by engaging in friendly conversation with strangers. But for an introvert, this same act might require significant courage and personal growth. The Stoics would likely argue that by pushing ourselves to be kind in ways that challenge us, we not only help others, but also expand our own capabilities and character. Epictetus, another Stoic philosopher, often spoke about the importance of facing challenges head-on. He might have viewed these difficult acts of kindness as opportunities for personal growth, chances to strengthen our character and expand our capacity for virtue. Thirdly, the Stoics would emphasize the importance of intention and mindfulness in our acts of kindness. They would encourage us to be fully present in each interaction, to consider carefully how we can best serve the situation at hand. This level of mindfulness not only makes our kindness more effective, but also helps us develop greater wisdom and discernment. Imagine, for example, the difference between absent-mindedly holding a door open for someone and taking a moment to truly see the person, to consider their needs, and to offer assistance in a way that respects their dignity. The action might look the same on the surface, but the internal experience and the potential for growth is vastly different. The Stoics might also challenge us to consider how our acts of kindness align with our broader values and goals, they believed in the importance of living a coherent, principled life. By ensuring that our kindness is an expression of our deepest values, we not only make our actions more meaningful, but also strengthen our own character and sense of purpose. This approach to kindness, one that emphasizes personal growth alongside helping others, might seem selfish at first glance. But the Stoics would likely argue that it's anything but. By continually striving to improve ourselves to become wiser and more virtuous, we increase our capacity to do good in the world. We become better equipped to offer meaningful help, to make difficult decisions, to navigate complex ethical dilemmas. Moreover, this approach to kindness creates a positive feedback loop. As we grow through our acts of kindness, we become capable of even greater kindness, which in turn leads to further growth. It's a virtuous cycle that benefits both the individual and society as a whole. Of course, this path is not always easy. It requires constant vigilance, a willingness to confront our own shortcomings, and the courage to push ourselves beyond our comfort zones. But the Stoics would argue that this is precisely what makes it worthwhile. It's through this process of striving, reflecting, and growing that we fulfill our potential as human beings and contribute most meaningfully to the world around us. As we continue to explore kindness through a stoic lens, we're invited to see it not just as a series of good deeds, but as a path of personal development and philosophical inquiry. 
We're challenged to approach each act of kindness with mindfulness and intention, to see it as an opportunity for learning and growth. This perspective on kindness offers us a powerful tool for navigating life's challenges. It suggests that by striving to be kind in a way that also fosters our own growth, we can find meaning and purpose even in difficult situations. We can transform everyday interactions into opportunities for personal development and philosophical reflection. As we continue our exploration of kindness through the Stoic lens, we encounter another intriguing aspect, the relationship between kindness and resilience. The Stoics, known for their emphasis on cultivating inner strength and equanimity in the face of adversity, would likely see a profound connection between these two qualities. At first glance, kindness and resilience might seem like separate virtues. We often think of kindness as a soft, outward-focused quality, while resilience is seen as a kind of inner toughness. But the Stoics, with their holistic view of virtue, would likely argue that these qualities are deeply intertwined and mutually reinforcing. Consider for a moment the challenges that often arise when we attempt to practice kindness in the world. We may face rejection, misunderstanding or even hostility. Our acts of kindness might not always have the intended effect, or they might be met with ingratitude. In such moments, resilience becomes crucial. It's what allows us to continue being kind even when it's difficult to persist in our efforts to do good, even when we don't see immediate results. Epictetus, one of the great Stoic teachers, once said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This wisdom is particularly relevant when it comes to kindness. The resilient individual from a stoic perspective is one who can maintain their commitment to kindness even in the face of adversity or disappointment. Imagine, for instance, a person who volunteers at a homeless shelter. They might encounter individuals who are angry, uncooperative or seemingly ungrateful. A less resilient person might become discouraged, perhaps even giving up on their efforts to help. But a resilient individual, guided by stoic principles, would be able to maintain their kindness and compassion even in these challenging situations. This resilience in kindness doesn't mean becoming a doormat or accepting abuse. The Stoics valued self-respect and personal boundaries highly. Rather, it means developing the inner strength to continue choosing kindness, even when it's difficult to act from a place of principle, rather than being swayed by external reactions or temporary emotions. But the relationship between kindness and resilience goes both ways. Just as resilience supports our ability to be consistently kind, the practice of kindness can also build our resilience. How? The Stoics might point to several mechanisms. First, practicing kindness often requires us to step outside of our own concerns and focus on others. This shift in perspective can be incredibly powerful, especially when we're facing our own challenges. By turning our attention to helping others, we often find that our own problems seem more manageable. We gain a sense of purpose and connection that can sustain us through difficult times. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, often wrote about the importance of focusing on service to others as a way of finding strength and purpose. He might have seen acts of kindness as opportunities to transcend our own troubles and connect with something larger than ourselves. Secondly, consistent acts of kindness can help us build a supportive network of relationships. While the Stoics emphasized inner strength and self-reliance, they also recognized the value of community by cultivating kindness in our interactions with others, we create a web of positive connections that can provide support and resilience in times of need. Thirdly, the practice of kindness can help us develop a more balanced and realistic view of the world. When we engage in acts of kindness, we often encounter both the struggles and the strengths of others. This can help us put our own challenges into perspective and recognize the shared nature of human experience. The Stoics valued this kind of clear-sighted understanding of reality, seeing it as crucial for developing true resilience. Moreover, by practicing kindness consistently, we develop a kind of emotional muscle memory. We become accustomed to choosing positive, constructive responses, even in difficult situations. This habit of mind can serve us well when we face our own challenges, helping us respond with equanimity and wisdom, rather than being overwhelmed by negative emotions. The Stoics might also point out that kindness and resilience share a common foundation. 
a strong sense of personal values and principles. When we act from a place of deeply held values such as the commitment to kindness, we become more resilient in the face of external pressures or setbacks. Our actions are guided not by fleeting emotions or circumstances, but by enduring principles. This connection between kindness and resilience offers us a powerful framework for navigating life's challenges. It suggests that by cultivating kindness, we're not just benefiting others, we're also building our own inner strength and capacity to thrive in the face of adversity. Of course, this path is not always easy. It requires consistent effort, self-reflection, and a willingness to persist even when we don't see immediate results. But the Stoics would argue that this is precisely what makes it worthwhile. It's through this process of consistent practice and reflection that we develop true virtue and resilience. As we continue to explore kindness through a Stoic lens, we're invited to see it not just as a series of good deeds, but as a fundamental approach to life that can strengthen us, connect us with others, and help us navigate even the most challenging circumstances. We're challenged to cultivate a kindness that is not fragile or dependent on external conditions, but robust and grounded in inner strength. This perspective offers us a powerful tool for personal growth and societal change. It suggests that by cultivating kindness and resilience together, we can not only improve our own lives, but also contribute to creating a more compassionate and resilient society. In a world often marked by division and hardship, this stoic approach to kindness offers a path towards greater individual and collective well-being. As we delve further into the stoic exploration of kindness, we encounter yet another fascinating dimension, the relationship between kindness and wisdom. The stoics, with their emphasis on rational thought and practical wisdom, would likely argue that true kindness must be guided by deep understanding and discernment. This idea challenges our common conception of kindness as a purely emotional or intuitive response. While the Stoics certainly valued compassion and empathy, they would likely argue that these feelings alone are not sufficient to guide our actions. Instead, they would encourage us to cultivate a kind of kindness that is informed by wisdom, one that considers not just immediate feelings, but long-term consequences and broader contexts consider for a moment the complexities that often arise in our attempts to be kind. We might face situations where what seems kind in the moment could have negative consequences in the long run. Or we might encounter dilemmas where being kind to one person could inadvertently harm another. In such cases, the Stoics would argue, we need more than just good intentions, we need wisdom. Seneca, one of the great Stoic philosophers, once wrote, no one can live happily who has regard to himself alone and transforms everything into a question of his own utility. You must live for your neighbor if you would live for yourself. This quote encapsulates the stoic view of the interconnectedness of all things and the importance of considering the broader impact of our actions. But how do we determine what truly serves our neighbor? This is where wisdom comes in. The stoics might encourage us to approach kindness with a series of thoughtful questions what are the potential consequences of this act of kindness, both short-term and long-term? How might it affect not just the immediate recipient, but others who are indirectly involved? Is this act of kindness aligned with broader principles of justice and virtue? By engaging in this kind of reflection, we move beyond reflexive kindness to a more thoughtful, discerning approach. This doesn't mean that every act of kindness requires extensive philosophical analysis, the Stoics recognized the value of spontaneous compassion and would likely argue that developing wisdom allows us to act more intuitively in alignment with virtue. But they would encourage us to regularly reflect on our actions, to learn from our experiences, and to continually refine our understanding of what true kindness entails. Moreover, the Stoics might argue that wisdom enhances our capacity for kindness in several ways. First, wisdom helps us recognize opportunities for kindness that we might otherwise miss. By developing a deeper understanding of human nature and the interconnectedness of all things, we become more attuned to the needs of others and the ways in which we can make a positive impact. Secondly, wisdom allows us to be kind in more effective ways. By understanding the complexities of situations and the unique needs of individuals, we can tailor our acts of kindness to be more meaningful and impactful. 
This might mean recognizing when someone needs practical help rather than just sympathy or understanding when the kindest action is to allow someone to face a challenge on their own. Thirdly, wisdom helps us navigate the ethical dilemmas that often arise in our attempts to be kind. It provides us with a framework for making difficult decisions, allowing us to consider multiple perspectives and potential outcomes before acting. Consider, for example, the challenge of helping a friend who is struggling with addiction. The immediately kind response might be to offer unconditional support and assistance, but wisdom might tell us that sometimes the truly kind action is to set boundaries and encourage the friend to seek professional help, even if this causes short-term discomfort or conflict. The Stoics would likely argue that this kind of wise kindness is not just more effective, it's also more sustainable. When our kindness is guided by wisdom, we're less likely to burn out or become disillusioned. We're better equipped to handle the complexities and occasional disappointments that come with trying to do good in the world. But how do we cultivate this wise kindness? The Stoics offer several strategies. First, they would encourage us to engage in regular self-reflection. By examining our actions and their consequences, we can learn from our experiences and refine our approach to kindness over time. Secondly, they would emphasize the importance of studying philosophy and ethics. By grappling with complex moral questions and exposing ourselves to different perspectives, we develop a more nuanced understanding of what it means to be truly kind. Thirdly, they would likely advise us to seek out mentors and role models who exemplify wise kindness. By observing and learning from those who have developed this capacity, we can accelerate our own growth. As we continue to explore kindness through a stoic lens, we're invited to see it not just as a feeling or a series of actions, but as a skill that can be developed and refined over time. We're challenged to cultivate a kindness that is as wise as it is compassionate, as discerning as it is generous. This perspective offers us a powerful framework for navigating the complexities of modern life. In a world where our actions can have far-reaching consequences, where we're constantly confronted with complex ethical dilemmas, this stoic approach to kindness provides us with tools for making more thoughtful, impactful choices. Moreover, by linking kindness with wisdom, the Stoics offer us a path for continuous growth and development. Each act of kindness becomes not just an opportunity to help others, but a chance to deepen our understanding, refine our judgment, and become wiser individuals. As we move forward, let's challenge ourselves to practice this wise kindness in our daily lives. Let's strive to be kind in ways that are not just immediately comforting, but truly beneficial in the long run. Let's aim for a kindness that is grounded in deep understanding, that considers broader contexts and consequences, that aligns with our highest principles and values. In doing so, we honor the stoic tradition of seeking virtue through reason and reflection. We recognize that true kindness, like all virtues, is not a simple matter of following rules or indulging emotions, but a complex interplay of compassion, wisdom and principled action. And perhaps most importantly, we open ourselves up to a deeper, more meaningful way of engaging with the world around us, one that has the potential to create lasting positive change, both in our own lives and in society as a whole. As we continue our exploration of kindness through the stoic lens, we encounter yet another profound dimension, the relationship between kindness and self-mastery. The Stoics, renowned for their emphasis on self-control and inner discipline, would likely argue that true kindness is intrinsically linked to our ability to master our own thoughts, emotions and actions. At first glance, this connection might not be immediately apparent. We often think of kindness as an outward-focused virtue, while self-mastery seems more inwardly directed. But the Stoics, with their holistic view of virtue, would likely see these qualities as deeply interconnected and mutually reinforcing. Consider for a moment the challenges that often arise when we attempt to practice consistent kindness in our daily lives. We may face situations that test our patience, provoke our anger, or trigger our fears. In such moments, our capacity for kindness is directly tied to our ability to manage our own emotional responses. Epictetus, one of the great Stoic teachers, famously said, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This wisdom is particularly relevant when it comes to kindness. 
The individual who has achieved a degree of self-mastery from a stoic perspective is better equipped to respond with kindness even in challenging circumstances. Imagine, for instance, a person dealing with a difficult colleague at work. The natural response might be frustration, anger, or even retaliation. But the individual who has cultivated self-mastery can choose to respond with kindness instead, recognizing that the colleague's behavior may stem from their own struggles or insecurities. This kind of response requires not just good intentions, but a high degree of emotional regulation and self-control. But the relationship between kindness and self-mastery goes both ways. Just as self-mastery supports our ability to be consistently kind, the practice of kindness can also strengthen our capacity for self-mastery. How? The Stoics might point to several mechanisms. First, practicing kindness often requires us to override our immediate impulses or emotional reactions. When we choose to respond with kindness in a difficult situation, we're exercising our capacity for self-control. Over time, this practice strengthens our ability to manage our thoughts and emotions in all areas of life. Secondly, consistent acts of kindness can help us develop a more stable sense of self-worth. The Stoics believed that true self-esteem comes not from external validation, but from living in accordance with our values. By regularly acting with kindness, we reinforce our identity as virtuous individuals, which can make us less reactive to external pressures or criticisms. Thirdly, the practice of kindness can help us develop greater emotional intelligence and empathy. As we become more attuned to the needs and feelings of others, we also become more aware of our own emotional states. This increased self-awareness is a crucial component of self-mastery. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, often wrote about the importance of self-reflection and self-discipline. He might have seen acts of kindness as opportunities to practice these skills, to observe our own reactions and choices, and to cultivate greater self-mastery. Moreover, the Stoics might argue that true kindness requires a certain detachment from outcomes, a key aspect of self-mastery. When we act kindly with the expectation of gratitude or reciprocation, we set ourselves up for disappointment and may even undermine the virtue of our actions. But when we can offer kindness freely without attachment to the result, we demonstrate a high level of emotional maturity and self-control. This connection between kindness and self-mastery offers us a powerful framework for personal growth. It suggests that by cultivating kindness, we're not just benefiting others, we're also developing our own character and capacity for self-regulation. Of course, this path is not always easy. It requires consistent effort, self-reflection, and a willingness to confront our own shortcomings. We may find ourselves struggling to respond with kindness in certain situations or grappling with feelings of frustration when our kind actions don't have the intended effect. But the Stoics would argue that these challenges are precisely what make the journey worthwhile. As we continue to explore kindness through a Stoic lens, we're invited to see it not just as a series of outward actions, but as a fundamental approach to life that can strengthen our inner resources and help us achieve greater equilibrium. We're challenged to cultivate a kindness that is not dependent on external circumstances or emotional whims, but grounded in a deep sense of self-mastery and inner peace. This perspective offers us a powerful tool for navigating the complexities of modern life. In a world that often seems chaotic and unpredictable, this stoic approach to kindness provides us with a source of stability and agency. It suggests that by cultivating kindness alongside self-mastery, we can not only improve our relationships with others, but also develop greater resilience and inner strength. As we delve deeper into the stoic exploration of kindness, we encounter yet another fascinating dimension, the relationship between kindness and cosmic perspective. The stoics, known for their belief in a rational and ordered universe, would likely argue that true kindness is intimately connected to our understanding of our place in the grand scheme of things. This idea might seem abstract at first, but it has profound implications for how we approach kindness in our daily lives. The Stoics believed in a concept they called sympatheia, the idea that all things in the universe are interconnected and interdependent. From this viewpoint, an act of kindness is not just a transaction between two individuals, but a contribution to the harmony of the entire cosmos. 
Marcus Aurelius in his Meditations wrote, All things are implicated with one another, and the bond is holy, and there is hardly anything unconnected with any other thing. This perspective invites us to see our acts of kindness as ripples in a vast ocean, influencing the world in ways we might not immediately perceive. Consider for a moment how this cosmic perspective might influence our approach to kindness. When we view our actions as part of a larger interconnected whole, even small acts of kindness take on greater significance. The smile we offer to a stranger, the supportive word we give to a colleague, the moment of patience we extend in a frustrating situation, all of these become not just isolated good deeds, but contributions to the overall balance and well-being of the universe. This cosmic perspective also challenges us to expand our circle of kindness. The Stoics advocated for a kind of cosmopolitanism, the idea that we are all citizens of the world and have obligations to humanity as a whole. From this viewpoint, kindness should not be limited to our immediate circle of family and friends, but should extend to all of humanity and even to nature itself. Imagine how this might change our approach to global issues like poverty, climate change or social injustice. When we truly internalize the idea of cosmic interconnectedness, these problems become not just abstract issues happening to other people in far-off places, but challenges that affect us all, calling for our kindness and action. But the relationship between kindness and cosmic perspective goes both ways. Just as a cosmic perspective can enhance our kindness, the practice of kindness can also help us develop a more expansive worldview. How? The Stoics might point to several mechanisms. First, practicing wide-ranging kindness often exposes us to diverse people and situations, broadening our understanding of the world and our place in it. As we extend kindness beyond our immediate circle, we begin to see the common humanity in all people, regardless of their background or circumstances. Secondly, consistent acts of kindness can help us transcend our egocentric perspective. When we focus on helping others and contributing to the greater good, we naturally shift our attention away from our personal concerns and towards a more universal outlook. Thirdly, the practice of kindness can give us a tangible sense of our ability to influence the world around us. This can combat feelings of insignificance or helplessness in the face of vast cosmic forces, helping us understand our role as active participants in the unfolding of the universe. Epictetus, another Stoic philosopher, taught that we should focus on what is within our control and accept what is not. This wisdom, when applied to kindness, encourages us to take action where we can, while maintaining a sense of equanimity about outcomes we can't control. It's a perspective that balances cosmic awareness with practical, grounded action. This connection between kindness and cosmic perspective offers us a powerful framework for finding meaning and purpose in our lives. It suggests that by cultivating kindness, we're not just improving individual relationships or situations, but participating in the harmony and evolution of the entire cosmos. Of course, maintaining this expansive perspective is not always easy. In the midst of daily pressures and personal concerns, it's natural for our focus to narrow. But the Stoics would argue that this is precisely why we need to regularly remind ourselves of the bigger picture. As we continue to explore kindness through a Stoic lens, we're invited to see our acts of kindness not as isolated good deeds, but as integral parts of a vast, interconnected whole. We're challenged to cultivate a kindness that is as expansive as the cosmos itself, that recognizes our shared humanity and our common stake in the well-being of the world. This perspective offers us a profound source of motivation and resilience in our practice of kindness. In moments when our efforts seem small or ineffective, we can draw strength from the knowledge that we are contributing to something much larger than ourselves. When we face setbacks or ingratitude, we can find solace in the understanding that the true value of our kindness extends far beyond immediate results or recognition. Moreover, by linking kindness with cosmic perspective, the Stoics offer us a path to transcendence in our everyday lives. Each act of kindness becomes not just an opportunity to help others, but a chance to connect with the universal, to participate in the grand dance of existence. It's a way of finding the extraordinary in the ordinary, of touching the infinite through finite actions. 
As we continue our journey through the stoic landscape of kindness, we encounter yet another profound dimension, the relationship between kindness and personal authenticity. The Stoics, with their emphasis on living in accordance with nature and one's true self, would likely argue that genuine kindness must flow from a place of authentic being. This idea challenges us to examine the motivations behind our acts of kindness. Are we being kind because it aligns with our deepest values and sense of self, or are we simply conforming to social expectations? The Stoics would encourage us to strive for a kindness that is a genuine expression of our authentic selves, rather than a mask we wear to please others or fit in. Seneca, one of the great Stoic philosophers, wrote, We should live as if we were in public view and think, too, as if someone could peer into the inmost recesses of our heart. This sentiment speaks to the importance of integrity and authenticity in all our actions, including our acts of kindness. Consider for a moment how this perspective might change our approach to kindness. When our kind acts stem from a place of authenticity, they carry a different quality. They're not performed out of obligation or for the sake of appearance, but because they're a natural expression of who we truly are. This kind of authentic kindness is likely to be more sustainable, more fulfilling and ultimately more impactful. But cultivating this authentic kindness is not always easy. It requires a deep level of self-knowledge and self-acceptance. We must be willing to confront our own strengths and weaknesses to understand our true motivations and to align our actions with our core values. The Stoics might suggest several strategies for developing this kind of authentic kindness. First, they would encourage regular self-reflection. By examining our thoughts, feelings and actions, we can gain a clearer understanding of our true selves and what genuinely motivates us. This self-awareness can help us identify when our kindness is authentic and when it might be driven by less noble motives. Secondly, they would emphasize the importance of defining and living by our own values. When we have a clear sense of what we stand for, our acts of kindness naturally align with these principles, making them more authentic and meaningful. Thirdly, they might advise us to practice honesty and transparency in our interactions. By being true to ourselves in all our dealings, we create a foundation for authentic kindness. Marcus Aurelius in his Meditations often reflected on the importance of staying true to one's nature. He might have seen authentic kindness as a way of fulfilling our potential as human beings, of living in harmony with our true selves and with the natural order of the universe. But the relationship between kindness and authenticity is not one-sided. Just as authenticity enhances our kindness, the practice of kindness can also help us become more authentic. How? The Stoics might point to several mechanisms. First, acts of kindness often require us to be vulnerable, to show our true selves to others. This practice of openness and vulnerability can help us become more comfortable with our authentic selves in all areas of life. Secondly, when we consistently act with kindness, we reinforce our identity as compassionate beings. This can help us align our self-image with our highest values, leading to greater authenticity in all our actions. Thirdly, the practice of kindness often brings us into contact with diverse people and situations, challenging our preconceptions and helping us discover new aspects of ourselves. This process of self-discovery can lead to a more authentic way of being in the world. This connection between kindness and authenticity offers us a powerful framework for personal growth and social interaction. It suggests that by cultivating kindness from a place of genuine self-expression, we can not only have a more positive impact on others, but also live more fulfilling and integrated lives ourselves. As we navigate this path, we may find that our kindness becomes more nuanced and individualized. Rather than conforming to generic notions of what kindness should look like, we might discover unique ways of expressing kindness that are true to our personal strengths, experiences and values. This authentic kindness might sometimes look different from conventional expectations. It might involve setting boundaries, speaking hard truths or taking unconventional actions. But if it stems from a place of genuine care and aligns with our deepest values, it embodies the highest form of kindness from a Stoic perspective. As we continue to explore kindness through a Stoic lens, we're invited to see it not just as a series of good deeds, 
but as a fundamental expression of our authentic selves, we're challenged to cultivate a kindness that is as unique as our individual natures, that honors both our shared humanity and our personal truths. This perspective offers us a profound source of meaning and purpose in our practice of kindness. It suggests that by aligning our kind actions with our authentic selves, we're not just helping others, we're also fulfilling our own nature and potential. In a world that often pressures us to conform or to present a curated image of ourselves, this stoic approach to kindness provides a path to greater authenticity and self-realization. As we delve deeper into the stoic exploration of kindness, we encounter yet another profound dimension, the relationship between kindness and the acceptance of impermanence. The Stoics, with their acute awareness of the transient nature of all things, would likely argue that true kindness is intimately connected to our understanding and acceptance of life's inherent impermanence. This concept might seem counterintuitive at first. After all, isn't kindness about making positive, lasting changes in the world? But the Stoic perspective invites us to consider how our acceptance of impermanence can actually enhance and deepen our capacity for kindness. Consider the words of Marcus Aurelius, everything we hear is an opinion, not a fact. Everything we see is a perspective, not the truth. This reminder of the subjective and fleeting nature of our perceptions can profoundly impact how we approach kindness. When we truly internalize the impermanence of all things, including our own lives and the results of our actions, it can free us to act with greater compassion and less attachment to outcomes. Imagine for a moment how this perspective might change our approach to kindness. When we understand that everything our possessions, our relationships, even our own lives is temporary, we might be more inclined to share freely, to forgive readily, to cherish each moment of connection. Our kindness becomes less about creating permanent changes or leaving a lasting legacy and more about contributing positively to the ever-flowing river of existence. This acceptance of impermanence can also help us navigate the inevitable disappointments and setbacks that come with trying to be kind in an imperfect world. When our acts of kindness don't have the effect we hoped for, or when they're met with ingratitude or misunderstanding, the recognition of impermanence can help us maintain our equanimity and continue to act with compassion. But the relationship between kindness and the acceptance of impermanence is not one-sided. Just as the recognition of impermanence can enhance our kindness, the practice of kindness can also help us come to terms with the transient nature of existence. How? The Stoics might point to several mechanisms. First, acts of kindness often bring us into direct contact with the impermanence of life. When we help someone who is ill or comfort someone who is grieving, we're confronted with the reality of change and loss. This exposure, while sometimes painful, can help us develop a more realistic and accepting view of life's transience. Secondly, the practice of kindness can help us focus on the present moment, rather than getting caught up in regrets about the past or anxieties about the future. This present focused mindset aligns well with the stoic emphasis on living in accordance with nature and accepting what we cannot change. Thirdly, by regularly extending kindness to others, we create a network of positive connections that can provide support and resilience in the face of life's inevitable changes. While these connections themselves are impermanent, they can help us navigate the ups and downs of life with greater ease and grace. Epictetus, another prominent Stoic philosopher, taught that we should focus on what is within our control and accept what is not. This wisdom, when applied to kindness, encourages us to act compassionately in the moment while releasing attachment to specific outcomes or long-term results. This connection between kindness and the acceptance of impermanence offers us a powerful framework for finding peace and purpose in our lives. It suggests that by cultivating kindness with an awareness of life's transience, we can live more fully in the present and find meaning in each fleeting moment. Of course, truly internalizing this perspective is not easy. Our natural inclination is often to seek permanence to try to hold on to what we value. But the Stoics would argue that this is precisely why we need to regularly remind ourselves of life's impermanence and to practice kindness as a way of embracing rather than resisting this fundamental truth. As we continue to explore kindness through a stoic lens, we're invited to see our acts of kindness not as attempts to create lasting change, 
but as momentary contributions to the flow of existence, we're challenged to cultivate a kindness that is as fleeting and precious as life itself that recognizes the value of each moment of connection and compassion. This perspective offers us a profound source of freedom in our practice of kindness. When we release the need for our kind acts to have lasting impact or recognition, we can act more spontaneously and authentically. We can find joy in the act of kindness itself rather than being attached to its results. Moreover, by linking kindness with the acceptance of impermanence, the Stoics offer us a path to greater peace and resilience. Each act of kindness becomes not just an opportunity to help others, but a chance to practice embracing the transient nature of all things. It's a way of finding meaning and beauty in the very impermanence that often causes us distress. In a world that often seems chaotic and unpredictable, this stoic approach to kindness provides us with a source of stability and purpose. It reminds us that while we cannot control the ultimate outcomes of our actions or the length of our lives, we can choose to fill each moment with kindness and compassion. In doing so, we not only contribute to the well-being of others, but also cultivate a deep sense of peace and fulfillment within ourselves.